first step is to find your coolant leak and raise your vehicle. Um, active leaks can be found with either coolant dye, which I'll link a video to, or older leaks will have evaporated and have a crust like such. Once you've found your leak, go ahead and jack up the front driver's side of your car um, and we'll get started. Identify a container that you're comfortable having coolant in, considering that coolant is poisonous to a lot of animals. Once you've done that, put the bucket underneath the drain plug and use a 7 8 socket, maybe 22 millimeters, to undo it and drain the coolant. Uh, be sure not to drop the socket that you need. Go ahead and chase the socket that you dropped, and then once you get it, um, undo the drain plug and drain all the coolant into the bucket. While the coolant drains, go ahead and remove the air intake box. Uh, the top part is held on by latches, and the bottom part is held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. It's not necessary to take out the bottom part, uh, but you can if you need the extra room. You need to also remove the metal collar with a flathead screwdriver that connects the air intake box to the uh, air intake, uh, as well as the electrical connection for the mass airflow sensor, and then open the coolant reservoir so that it won't be under vacuum. While your coolant continues to drain, go ahead and remove your fan and subsequently debate more work. Um, keep in mind that my clutch fan, I have converted to an electric fan, so it's a, a pretty easy just disconnect and slide out. Um, if you still have an old mechanical fan, I will link to a video that will tell you how to, how to get that out. So go ahead and pull out your fan, and then you currently have access to the lower radiator hose, the thermostat, the water pump, the upper radiator hose, and the belts. So I went ahead and did my belts here. It's not necessary, but it's definitely something uh, convenient to do if you're going to need them soon anyway. If this video is helpful, please like, subscribe, or super thanks. If you're not super, super thanks is, it's basically you buying me a beer from a distance, so cheers. Move your coolant bucket over underneath the lower radiator hose. Disconnect the sensor by pulling on the, we'll call it the metal gate, and pulling straight up. The next step is going to be to pull off all of these metal gates. This is what keeps the hose in place uh, that connects to the radiator or connects to the thermostat. So there's the one that connects to the thermostat. See, I pull the gate and then I pull the gate up for the one that connects to the radiator. Um, the one that connects to the thermostat wiggles off pretty easily. The one that connects to the radiator is really, really difficult. Uh, I ultimately had to get under the car and kind of wiggle it from, from there. But the goal is to go almost straight up and down. Um, those two notches are what prevent it from coming out. When installing the new lower radiator hose, it's easier to connect the lower portion to the radiator first. Um, so the goal here is to open the gate, clean up the connection, uh, put it on, and then I found that putting on the bottom part first and almost rocking it back and forth was the easiest way to get it on. Um, the gate then slides down into place and locks in. Then you can put the sensor back in and uh, lock its gate into place, and then ultimately um, go ahead and connect the top portion to the thermostat. Uh, again, the notches line up, the gate clicks into place, and if you give it a little tug, uh, it shouldn't move. Removing the upper radiator hose is basically more of the same. Um, you want to open up all the gates and then continue to use the flathead screwdriver to um, and your, your muscles to kind of separate from the thermostat in this case um, and then wiggle it off. Uh, there are actually two connections from the upper radiator hose to the coolant reservoir. Um, one big gate, one little gate. One big connection, one little connection, but the same process to get it off. So when installing the new upper radiator hose, you want to first make sure all your O-rings are seated correctly. Um, and then start with the coolant reservoir side, the two connection side. Make sure both of those are in um, and that the gates lock down correctly. Again, give them a little tug to make sure that they're snug. You can see I do it a couple times here. Uh, and then go ahead and connect the other side to the thermostat. Um, again, lift up the gate, click it on, put the gate down, give it a little tug to make sure it's uh, on correctly. Bleeding the coolant is arguably the most important step. Um, start with the engine cold, which it probably already is. Uh, reinstall the drain plug from the bottom of the coolant reservoir. Um, then go ahead and uh, take off the bleed screw. Pour in roughly half of the coolant. 
um, turn the engine to position two, uh, turn the top part to heat. You want to go to the highest temperature, lowest fan speed, and let that just kind of remain on. Um, continue to fill up the coolant until it begins to come out of the bleed screw. And then uh, as it comes out, you'll be able to see that it bubbles up just like that and like that. Um, that's just the air leaving the system. So you want to let this happen for definitely a couple minutes um, where the air is on on the inside of the car and you know you just kind of let bubbles continue to come out. After it's been a couple minutes and there are no more bubbles uh, coming out, go ahead and put on the lid for the coolant reservoir. Uh, it should be hand tight. And then go ahead and put on the bleed screw, again pretty much hand tight, and you should be good to go. It's at this point that you want to go ahead and turn the car actually on. Uh, let it run for maybe 5 or 10 minutes. The goal is that the temperature gauge should go straight up to 12 noon. Um, and then once it does that, go ahead and put everything back together and make sure you have no leaks.